Hey everybody, welcome back to Through the Woods 360. We're both really glad you could join us at the campsite today. Yes, it is. It's a pretty day here. A um, little warm. We're still warm. We're in October, but it's supposed to be cooling off here next weekend, I think. But we're thinking fall, like always. We always, we always think fall or winter. But fall, vegetables are in, and we have a butternut squash. So we decided... I know this will keep this will keep all winter, honestly. But we decided since fall's here, we're gonna make a fall dish, and I think pork goes awesome with butternut squash. So we've also got some apples that were left on the apple trees, and we've got some kraut, and we're gonna whip us up kind of a two meal dish because we're gonna throw some potatoes and serve it along with some mashed potatoes. But stick around, and we'll see how it turns out. But before we leave you, there is something. If you watched our homemade grape jelly episode which aired last week, I believe. You got to see the story of, a part of the story of our mother and her potato masher that Leslie just dearly loves. And thinking about that later on that evening, I did some serious diving into eBay and I actually have a little gift for Leslie that I'd like to give her in front of you guys. So Leslie, I found these on eBay, and these are for you. Oh my God, no way. Oh my God, no way. Yes. Are you serious? Yes. eBay has everything. Oh my God, <laughs> you guys, look. It's like the whole set. And I got the um, cake icing thing from my dad and his wife. Um, they gave it to me, um, I think, after we did the jelly video, I think. So uh, I got the whole set. That there's a slotted spoon and the regular spoon and the ladle. Uh, now mom will be with us On every almost time. every video, yes. Oh yeah, we'll use something, one or the other. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna be icing any cakes, but. <laughs> you never know. Awesome, thank you, Gina. Isn't You're he a welcome. great brother? <laughs> See how he loves me. <laughs> All right See? guys, stay tuned to watch this wonderful fall goodness. Nice. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up our butternut squash so we can start to cook it. and. Winter squashes, butternut, acorn, um, um, spaghetti, they, they're they all a harder squash. So they can be, it can be kind of dangerous to actually cut them up. Butternut, honestly, I, I think is a little easier than some of them. But you just kind of want to get yourself some level surfaces and I'd cut the bottom and the top off and I'm just going to go straight down through the middle. I think this is the safest way. No fingers around the knife, so if, when I come through, I don't cut one of them off. Yeah, you, that would not be a good thing. And then you can see you got to take the seeds and this membrane out. Hey, looky here. <laughs> <laughs> Using it already. Get to work, mom. So <laughs> you're just gonna you're just gonna scrape this out. Now, our mom, I don't know about butternut squash. We didn't really have that much growing up, but. Pumpkin and some other squash. Mom used to save the seeds. You can do and roast those, and they were. Awesome. You can do that with any squash seeds. Um, homemade roasted pumpkin seeds and squash seeds are awesome. These are a little smaller than pumpkin seeds. I've done it with these. I've done it with um, spaghetti squash. You just take these and you and you rinse them really good in some water and get all that membrane that's on there off. You know the stringy stuff, and then you soak them in some salt water. You put them in the oven with a little a little oil toss them in a little oil, roast them until they start to get brown, and then sprinkle them with maybe a little bit more salt, and they're good eating. They're awesome. So we're not gonna make you watch all this, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean both of these, get the seeds out of them, and then I'm gonna peel them, and we're gonna cut them up and put them in some water and get them cooking, and we'll bring you back when we start on the pork. Okay, I wanted to show you guys something. I took the seeds out of this lower portion here, but sometimes you also get, like, Gino, zoom in here real quick on the squash. Can you see that, Gino? Okay, if you guys can see this in here, here it isn't so bad, but here, can, 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 you, can you see this? It's kind of pithy, pethy, whatever. That's actually part of like the seed chamber. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick my spoon in there and take a little bit of that out. You probably wouldn't have to, but the texture of it's gonna be a little different because it's so much softer. So I did that, already did that on the other one. I just wanted to show you that just in case, you know, it's you, you, you don't wanna leave anything that's 
not good quality in there, you know. Okay, you guys, I, I, I had to bring it back in. I've got to show you something, okay? Uh, a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, whatever, a friend of mine named Brandy um, had a Pampered Chef party, and I bought these peelers, like, okay? And I put them in the drawer, and I just, I haven't used them. I totally forgot about them, honestly. But when I was going to do the squash, I thought that would be awesome. Now, each one of them comes with this little plastic cover that snaps off because they're really sharp, so you want to be careful. So I used this to peel the butternut squash. I just stood it on end and, and peeled it. You know, you can see everything's off. But I want you to watch how easy how easy this works. You know, I mean, it, it, it just peels right down, peels really good. But this is the cool thing. Oh, my God. Okay, so you want to make some, some decorative little ones. Look, this one puts little lines in it. So it's a little prettier, you know, a little fancier. Okay, but watch this. Oh my God, this is gonna be awesome. See these in front of me? Like julienne squash, you know, could be carrots, whatever you wanted to julienne, even potatoes. Watch this. Look at that. That's awesome. Isn't that unbelievable? I'm thinking I mean, that would take a lot of work out of making fresh hash browns. <laughs> It's that easy. Oh yeah, you wouldn't even have to grate them. You could just do them like this. Right. I mean, it's that easy. You just take it, take the peeler and pull it down. And the harder you push, of course, the thicker of a piece you're gonna get. But I mean, look at that. How can it get any easier than that? And we've got julienne squash. Now we're gonna throw this in with our sauerkraut, but we're also gonna use some of it in our pork. So I'm gonna get this cutting board cleaned off and get the squash put in, in a baggie for right now. And then we're gonna trim up our pork. So I, I have a feeling, oh, I gotta cut up an apple too. I have a feeling this is gonna be unbelievable. Okay, so we cut up a half of an extremely large onion, um, and it's a sweet onion. We cut up half of it and we put a couple of tablespoons of butter and about a tablespoon of olive oil in a cast iron skillet, and we're cooking those down. We're gonna cook them until we caramelize them a little bit, but while that's going, I'm, we're, we're gonna trim. This is just a chunk of a pork loin, a boneless pork loin, and we're trimming the fat, the fat off of it. And when I do this, I just kinda keep Keep my knife isn't the sharpest, it would be better if it was, but I keep a little pressure against it and I just slide my knife along that fat, between that fat and that meat to get that, to, to, to take that fat off of there. Uh, if I were cooking this as a whole roast, I'd leave it and then I would take that fat side and I put it down because then that fat kind of renders out and it caramelizes in there. But we're actually gonna take this and put this into slices and we're gonna pound it out. Now I don't have a meat pounder, because I forgot, I forgot to bring it. So you always um, forget something. Because you always forget <laughs> something. That's right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm just going to use a little iron skillet to do it, and I think it'll work fine. But if it doesn't, figure something out. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut these into pieces. That that end one is going to be not the same. So. Just pieces about like this because we're gonna take this and we're gonna pound this out really, really thin. And then we're gonna put our squash and some apples and the caramelized onions inside of it and roll it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this up. And when our onions are caramelized and we're ready to put everything together, we'll be back with you. Okay, so we are assembling our, um, we don't know what to call them yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a rouladen, but Rouladen has pickles in it, so I don't think we can call it that because that, you know, the haters will be out there. So, um, I don't know. We just took these pork cutlets, basically, um, and we put our squash on here. And then we have, in this pan, we had uh, taken some onions and we sauteed them. Actually, we kind of let them caramelize just a little bit. And then we added the apple. I didn't want the apple to cook in with the onions because I wanted any juice that was in the apples, I wanted to actually cook along in with this pork. Oh, yeah. So some of this is going to squeeze out of here, but we've got all of them done. Just bringing you down this last one before we put everything in that skillet and finish it. But what we're doing is we're taking this, um, trim these off a little bit, and we're just rolling this up. So it, it's I, I don't know, Leslie, what, it's, it's like a roulade except squash instead of pickles. Yeah, right? exactly. So we're just taking this and we're rolling it up. 
kind of like this and I let that squash hang out that other end because we realized um, after a while that it, it, it actually helps hold your string better and then we're just tying it up it's not you know you could use two pieces of string it probably would be easier but I just hate I hate having strings and toothpicks and you honestly could have used toothpicks but I hate having that in my stuff that I eat no I missed a squash on that one that's okay should be all right if it falls apart you just got to dig it out of the kraut and that's all right too so and we're going to come down to this end and we're going to tie this end and i'm going to shove some of those apples and onions back in there they just kind of fall out a little bit when you're putting them together but we're going to put it in that skillet why don't you uh take the lid off that skillet you know and slide it over here so they can see i'm really excited so what, we've, what we've done about the flavors coming alive here when this cooks in kraut oh yeah we're gonna, going to take uh, these mm, pork rolls. I don't know what you call them. We're going to take these and we're going to add a bag of kraut. You could use kraut, canned kraut, jarred kraut, whatever. I prefer the bagged kraut. I think it has a better flavor. Only, oh, well, our homemade kraut. Homemade kraut is definitely it's the best, better, but, but I did not get any kraut made this we're, year at all. We're out of it. We ate it all last I didn't, year. Yeah, we made it last year, and I just I, I just didn't get any. It wasn't a good year for cabbage. Our spring crops here did not do well at all. No. Um, so they're just, we're just buying kraut let this me, year. Maybe next year. zoom in on this handful of uncooked goodness Okay, here. and I need, uh, now I can stand up. Where is my squash, my bag with my squash? I'll grab it for you. That, that, those rolls look absolutely amazing. And I can only imagine after they simmer and crowd. We are not going to waste, we are not going to waste this, okay? So we're going to take this and we're just going to put this in here, just over the, over the top. This is your apples and the onions. Because this is a dish that we're going to eat all as one anyway. Hold on. That we're going to eat all as one anyway. However, we are going to make some mashed potatoes to go alongside it because you know we're german and you, if, if you got if you got kraut you got ham taters and I, ever since i was a little kid it's mandatory to put sauerkraut and sauerkraut juice on my mashed potatoes that's right oh i got a couple more pieces of apple to dice up and throw in there too so we're gonna this is our squash that we julienned and we're gonna put this in here you want me to open up that bag of stock for you? You certainly could, if you don't mind. Not at all. We're just gonna... I didn't want to put this on the bottom because if it gets a little hot, I really didn't want the squash. There's a certain amount of sugar in the squash. I didn't want it to... Ooh, that smells I didn't so want good. It to the squash or the crowd? The crowd. Oh, the squash smells good, too. Dump her on there? Yeah, to just kind of mix her around. You don't dump it in one spot. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me get this open a little further. This seam got me. There we My go. My grandma would call him a schlapahannes or something <laughs> else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another <laughs> German word that's not very flattering. Yeah. So that's okay. I see. I thank God I have hands. So I'm gonna. That's okay. This around here. We're in the woods, not in the kitchen. It's all good. And we're gonna turn this on low. We're not. We're not going to add water right away because there is moisture in that kraut and I don't want to get it too soupy. So we're going we're, we're gonna to turn it on low and we're going to let this all start to warm up and then, then we'll see if we need to add some water. So I'm just cutting up these last of these apples because, because they're already here and I don't want to waste them. We were always taught as kids, waste not, what not, you that know. That is correct. So, and it could certainly use a little more apple flavor. I had a total of um, two, uh, two apples. Two, well, almost, two, did I have three? Almost three. Three, oh yeah, that little almost one. Three. There was one that was little that didn't, it had some bad spots in it, but we didn't get a whole lot out of him, but he had it would some. be really interesting to see with the juice from the apples and the crowd if we need water. I know, that's why I said I don't, I don't, I never add water to something unless I know that I need to. So anyway, this is the number 10 Lodge cast iron skillet that I got, oh, when I left home way back when in 1987. And it was about the same quality as what you buy now. 
but it has since worn smooth and it's seasoned nice and well. And I had this lid here that was off of a cheap nonstick skillet that I got, I think from Walmart. Anyway, the skillet was junk, Teflon coming off, threw it out. And it just so happens, well, that I realized before I threw the skillet out, it perfectly fits my number 10 <laughs> skillet, which is just awesome because this is what I make my pork chops in with melt gravy and pork sausage. We do the same way and you'll eventually see all of that if y'all hang around long enough. But this, this, to have this lid that fits that good on a cast iron skillet, that's something. That's a big bonus. Plus big you can bonus. see in it, you know. Alrighty, we're going to uh, get it on the fire and we'll bring you back after it cooks a little bit. Okay, we have got our pork, mm, whatever we're going to call it, <laughs> in the skillet cooking over here on low, which is still boiling. But in this pot, we have some red skin, piece sized potatoes, and some butternut squash. And this we are going to let cook until it's tender. We're going to drain it, and then we're going to add some butter and some milk to it and make mashed potatoes and we're going to serve we're going to give it a rough mash since we got the skins on it we don't want to lose all those skins we just kind of want a chunky mashed potato so kind of like smashed potatoes i guess instead of mashed potatoes and that's what we're going to do here and then we don't want, we won't want to work mom too hard with her masher oh no she already oh no. worked with her spoon earlier. that's right that's right so in take a gander at this the, these are could. the pork what you call it? <laughs> Look at that. Those apples are already done. Getting their flavor in here on the pork. Mm. And our pork here, let me show you this. There's our butternut squash. See our pork in there? Now everybody knows pork when it looks like this. That's not appetizing. Sorry, just not appetizing. So after this is done and our cabbage has worked a number, I mean our sauerkraut has worked a number, on that pork and has tenderized it. And we've got all the flavor of the kraut and the squash and the apples and the onions. We've got all that flavor in there. We're gonna pull those pork rolls out of there and we're gonna put them in that skillet where we caramelized our onions. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt on top of these and we're gonna brown them up real good. And then that'll be right before we serve them because there's you don't want to put them back in here all that goodness will come off there you know that brown stuff yeah, that's we goodness don't want to lose any so goodness. we're going to immediately plate them up and scoop out some of this kraut and apples and onions and butternut squash and put it alongside some of those potatoes maybe put a little scoop of this on top of those potatoes <laughs> and, and try to come up with a creative name yep for this yeah oh that'll be interesting because i'm, I'm thinking i'm th here's what i'm thinking i'm thinking if it tastes Anything like I think it's going to taste, I think it's going to be called a pork kapow! <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so you guys already know whatever we decided to call it, but I think this is going to be stellar. I really do. I think it's going to be out of the park. Hey, we're going to go ahead and mash up these potatoes here. I got my butter, which is really soft, so I've thrown them in on top of the hot potatoes. And I just kind of slid my wrap route from underneath it works pretty slick really so we got our potatoes and squash in there and oh. we're gonna before I add any milk or anything else in here number one I'm gonna add me a little salt knock that butter off my finger squash definitely add some color to that doesn't it yep and we're not like I said we're not going to get crazy with the mashing. No, mom, mom had enough of a workout with that spoon That's earlier. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So we're just gonna mash it a little bit. You know, you see any lumps in there, kind of mash them up. We don't, I mean, honestly, boiled potatoes are good too, but I just thought this would be pretty. The red skins, the potatoes, the orange of the squash, oh, yeah. the white from the potatoes. So, that's pretty well all well, the more I'm going to mash that. All good fall colors. But, but we are going to add a little milk in here because, you know, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes, smashed potatoes, I don't care what you want to oh. call them. They still need a little milk. Especially that canned milk. That is so rich. If you've never made, 
<laughs> if you've never made mashed potatoes with canned milk, try it. You'd be amazed at the different taste. Mm. It's awesome. The richness, it's, a lot of people like cream. I actually prefer the canned milk. And same with same with the gravy, right? If you if you use that canned milk to make sausage gravy, it's much better than plain whole milk. Oh, definitely, definitely. So we're gonna. It's like it takes it up a notch or something. Oh, ma'am, <laughs> that is really good. That is really good. Um, the the butternut squash, and the and the and the potato flavor, it just changes it. Here, Gina, you gotta try. You'd be amazed at how different it can make it taste. It's a it's a total complimentary mm. flavor. Isn't that good? Almost like almost like a hint of a sweet potato almost. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we're going to put a lid back on here because we're still letting our pork and our sauerkraut and all that get done. And we can warm this up. We can add a little bit more milk to it if we want to. Warm it up. It'll be good to go. I'll tell you what, I I can only imagine what it's going to be like with sauerkraut juice on it. Oh, it's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be good. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. You all, you all want to take a peek in here at this? Let me grab my pot holder. Oh, I'm sure they do. Let's. This old there. pot holder, I swear to God, it's clean, but this is my camping pot holder, and it's been scorched and burned and soot, but it is clean. Oh, look at all that goodness. Oh, yeah, and we're cooking even slower now. We might bump her up just a little bit. Yeah, we can do that. It's, the wind's picked up some, so. Oh, we're starting to get tender. I can feel the pork starting to get tender. Mm. So we'll, we'll be ready. Juice. We'll definitely tenderize it. Oh, up. definitely. And simmer it in it. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to turn this up a little bit more. Let it cook here for just a couple more minutes. We're going to take it out and brown those pork rolls. Are you guys getting ready? Because we sure are. We've already got our pork rolls out of the sauerkraut and in a pan Gino our, our, get a shot of our, our pork whatever's this is our uh, squash and our sauerkraut where we took our pork pork rolls out of and then here they are we got them in the, this pan with a little bit of olive oil and I got some just some salt and pepper here I'm gonna sprinkle over the top of them our rolls or kapows or whatever little breezy. we decide to call them a little breezy <laughs> A little breezy out here, so I probably ought to get a little closer to them. But through a lot of piles, I don't know. A little of this on them, and we're already starting to sizzle. Quite a bit of, I got quite a bit of pepper, but I like pe pepper. And if you oh. don't like pepper, you don't have to put that much in it. I remember when I was a kid, not so much now, but Dad used to pepper his fried eggs so enough. much that they were black when he was before yeah. he ate them. I like fresh ground pepper. We got a couple of these just starting to fall apart, so we're gonna have to be a little gentle on a few of them. But you know what? They'll be all right. And you know what? I got mom here to help me. <laughs> I do. Thanks to my wonderful brother Gino. You gonna use one of those utensils, are you? I think so. I think we might need this, but we're gonna let them go a little bit. How about we let them go a little bit and y'all take a break and when you come back, hopefully we're going to have a little brown on here. I hope so anyway. I don't make them look nicer. Okay, we are just about ready to eat as soon as we get it on a plate. So we hit a couple in here that kind of fell apart, but... That's only because they're so tender. And I'll tell you what, I don't know how y'all feel, but I would rather have them falling apart tender than tough. Absolutely. So we're going to get a plate put together here for Gino. I'm just moving these around in here because the skillet is still warm. You know, your cast iron retains your heat, and I don't want to burn in any of them. So I've got that. We'll have to cut the strings off of here, but I'm sure he can manage that. Yep, I'm pretty sure I can handle that. And here's our sauerkraut and our squash. Doesn't that look good? And then we're going to use the same spoon because we eat ours mixed together anyway. We grab some potatoes. We'll be back with you for the taste test. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> 
Let's see. This Post up here. this this Let's is see. this is a feast. I mean, the smell is incredible. I can't even begin to describe it. There's so many different aromas right now. It's it's just unreal. I mean, I'm picking up the pork. I'm picking up the apple, the sauerkraut. It's just the aroma is Boy, unbelievable. Just taste it. Quit talking, man. <laughs> wow. How's the crap with the potatoes? Well, I don't know about that yet, but I'll, the pork literally melts in your mouth like chocolate. It just melts. It's, it's unreal. So, ever since I was a kid, I've always mixed my potatoes and sauerkraut together. It's like a cross between a mashed potato and a, and a, and a, and a baked sweet potato. The, the, the flavors, is just un, it's just unbelievable. And, and, and the squash and the kraut, this is just outstanding. I have never experienced anything like this before in my life. It, it's a culinary amazement to me. You guys really should try this. It's awesome.